Number 14 from the 2008 Advanced Tire, three parts. First part, find the equation of a plane given three points on the plane. Well, that's straightforward enough then, because that's going to be whatever the plane looks like. If I've got three points on the plane, I can find two vectors that lie in the plane, and from that, get the normal vector. Get the vector that's at right angles to them both, that's the normal to the plane, and then using the scalar product will give me the Cartesian equation. So the first thing is I need two vectors that lie in it, AB and AC will do. I'll work out AB by subtracting the position vectors, and I'll work out AC by subtracting the position vectors. So for B, I've got 2, negative 1, 1. For A, I've got 1, 1, 1, so I can put that in here as well. And for C, I've got 0, 3, 3. So how does that tidy up? That's going to be 1, negative 2, 0. And that's going to be negative 1, 2, 2. Now I can get the normal by taking the vector product of AB and AC. I'll set it out in the determinant form, I, J, K, where AB, 1, negative 2, 0, and AC, negative 1, 2, 2, would multiply out to be so many lots of I, minus so many lots of J, what's the set number of K, remember the signs of the relative minors, so for I, the determinant of its minor, negative 2 times 2, negative 4, take away the other diagonal, 0. For j, 1 times 2 is 2, take away the other diagonal, which is 0. And for k, main diagonal, 2, minus the product of the other diagonal, which is also 2. So that's going to give me negative 4i, minus 2j, plus 0k. So there's a vector that is perpendicular to the plane. Negative 4, negative 2, 0. Now, any vector perpendicular to the plane would do. So instead of that, I could just use, I could say, or divide them both by negative 2, 2, 1, 0 would be more convenient. Now I'll clear that away. So I've got my normal vector. Now it's just a case of saying, well, the normal the scalar product of the normal with any point in the plane will be the scalar product of the normal with any point in the plane, so any particular point. So n dot a. Remember the normal was 2, 1, 0. A partic any point would be x, y, z. The normal is 2, 1, 0. Any particular point, I could use 1, 1, 0. That, that was meant to be 1, 1, 1. So that should have been a 1, not a 0 at the end. Luckily, multiplying by a 0 obscures that little mistake. Now just multiply that out, so that's going to be 2x, scalar product, plus y, plus 0z, I'll put just now, is going to equal 2 plus 1 plus 0. So here's the equation of my plane then, 2x plus y equals 3. Now there's no mention of z in this equation, that doesn't stop it from being a plane, that simply means that this plane must be a vertical plane that's parallel to the z-axis, so there's no intersection with the z-axis. It doesn't stop points on this plane having z-coordinates, though. If you like, what they would look like would be this. Where does it intersect in this part here? Well, if y is 0, x is going to be 1.5. If x is 0, y is going to be 3. So there's that line as it appears in the first octant. But then that must be the line of intersection of this plane with the floor. So really it's a plane that sits like this, parallel with the z-axis, intersecting the floor along that line. Still, that's not needed for the question. Now part B, there's a second plane, pi two, with this equation, and eventually you have to find the equation of the line of intersection of them, but it seems to be guiding you along that more tedious way of doing it, instead of just doing it algebraically, of finding a point on the line of intersection, and then using their normals to get the direction of the line of intersection, hence finding its equation. So first of all, it says what's A plus B, so you have to answer that then. Well, taking plane 
taking plane P1. If x equals 0, then that means quite quickly, if x is 0, you're just left with y equals 3. And then taking plane 2, if x equals 0 and y equals 3, feeding that into that, that means that quite quickly you've got 9 minus z equals 2, which means z must be 7. So you've got the point 0, 3, 7. But it did say, find the values of A and B, so I'll have to state that specifically. So A equals 3, B equals 7. So the path you've been taken down here by the nature of the question of saying, find this point, you found a point on the intersection of the plane. To get the equation of the line of the intersection, you simply need a point on it and you've got it. And a direction vector that lies along in the same direction as that line of intersection. And since that line lies on both planes, it must be perpendicular to the normals of either plane. And so the way you can find u is by taking the cross product of the normals. So I'll take the first one, I'll call that normal 1. The normal to the first one is 2, 1, just taking the coefficients of the three terms, 2, 1, and then it was 0 because there wasn't a z term. The normal to plane 2 will be 1, 3, negative 1. And the direction vector of the line will be n1 cross n2. So I could go through that determinant form of it, i, j, k. There may be quicker ways, but I'll just stick with this just now. So 2, 1, 0, and negative 1, 3, negative 1 which would be equal to so many lots of i minus so many lots of j plus so many lots of k. Just to write it this way so I don't bump into that diagram. So what have we got for i? Get the minor, knocking out the row in the column. That's negative 1 for the main diagonal product, minus 0. j, main diagonal, negative 2. But again, take away 0. And for k, 6 for the main diagonal, take away 1. So that's going to give me negative 1 lot of i, minus 2, but take away as a negative, so plus 2 lots of j, plus 5 lots of k. So the direction vector of the line will be negative 1, 2, 5, and you can't do any better than that. I can't make that any simpler by reducing the number of negatives or dividing down common multiples of the components. Now, Having a point on the line and the direction vector of the line, you could just leap into one of the forms. Say we use the symmetric form of it. The symmetric form being x minus a over the x component of the direction vector equals y minus b over the y component equals z minus c over the z component. And of course that all would equal some parameter t. Fitting that in where a, b, c is the point on it, not those a and b's. So I've got x minus 0 over negative 1 would equal y minus 3 over 2 would equal z minus 7 over 5 would do. Could take that 0 away. So what I've got then is just x over negative 1 equals y minus 3 upon 2 equals z minus 7 upon 5. Part C, find the size of the acute angle between the two planes. Well, if you take the two planes, however they might cross, so that was pi 1 and pi 2 looking edgewise on them, so the line of intersection is lying directly downwards away from you, then whichever way you've got the acute angle, so if I'm taking that as the acute angle, if you were to join the normals, then this angle here, this acute angle, being the supplement of this, now since those are both right angled, and we've got a kite there, that means if this is a supplement of that, then this angle must be the same as this angle here. So that's the same as the acute angle between the normals. So what were the normals again? So the normal of plane 1 was just 2, 1, 0. The normal of plane 2 is 1, 3, negative 1. And you just want the acute angle between the two of them. 
your angle happens to be obtuse, then just take it supplement. But there's a way around that. So you're going to use the scalar product. You're going to be saying this. The cosine of the angle between them will be the scalar product of them divided by their lengths. Then, if that happens to be a positive amount, fair enough. If it happens to be a negative amount, well, if it was a negative amount, then you'd have an obtuse angle, in which case you'd have to do 180 minus it. But if you expand that, then that comes to zero and that comes to negative one. That just equals the negative of cos theta, the angle you want. In other words, if that happens to be a negative amount, then just ignore the negative and that'll give you the acute value. So what you could do then is just say, I'm just going to take the absolute value of that. So I've got scalar product, 2 times 1, 2, 1 times 3, 3, plus 0. Lengths, square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 0 squared, multiplied by the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared plus negative 1 squared. I've also, I've, straight away, I've just ignored my absolute value because the top's obviously positive. So I've got 5 over the square root of 5 times the square root of 11. So theta is going to be inverse cos of 5 over root 55, which when you put it into your calculator comes to 47.6 degrees. Now just as an extra part, in part B, for finding the line of intersection of the two planes, instead of following the route of find a point on it, and then use the vector product of the normals to get the direction vector of the line of intersection, you could do it just simply algebraically by solving the pair of equations together. Now sometimes that's nice and quick because you get nice answers, and sometimes it's a bit nasty, which is in this particular case. However, there are resolutions to that. Say we did that algebraically. That's just like saying I want to solve these two equations simultaneously. Obviously there's a redundancy because I've only got two equations with three variables and that's when you let one of the variables run along with a parameter. But if you set it even just using the Gaussian way, what would it be? You've got 2, 1, 0, 3 for this equation and you've got 1, 3, negative 1, 2 for that equation. And the solution would just be well, if I do 2 of row 2 minus row 1, remember it's just the same as something as equations, then I've got 2, 1, 0, 3, and then that'll go down to 0. 6, take away the 1, is 5, and negative 2, and that's 4, take away the 3, is 1. And then you would just say, right, there's a redundancy, so do this. Let z equal t, in which case 5y minus 2t is going to equal 1, and that's where it all starts to get a bit nasty. Because I've got 5y is going to be 1 plus 2t, which would be quite nice, but then I've got y equals a fifth plus two fifths of t. I'll need to get rid of that. Then going back for, to, for x, I've got 2x plus y, which is this, that's a fifth plus two fifths of t, equals 3. So that's going to be 2x equals, taking a fifth across and subtracting it, that'll have to be 15, take away 1 will be 14 fifths, minus 2 fifths of t, and then finally dividing by 2, I've got 7 fifths minus 1 fifth of t. And then you're probably thinking, well that looks absolutely nothing like the parametric equations of the line you just got before. <clears throat> and that's true, because what happens with the equation of a line is, you can start at any point you like and take steps of the direction vector, which could be any length you like. Now you could move that point somewhere else to make it neater. You can change the components of the vector to make them into nice integers. Because what we've got here, if those are the parametric equations, then I can extract the information from this of what exactly are the coordinates of the point. Using this, this says that the point I found in the line by solving it algebraically is 7 fifths for x, 1 fifth for y, and 0 for z, and the direction vector I've got is negative a fifth for the x component, 2 fifths for the y component, 
and one for the Z component. That's a bit nasty. But you don't need to keep these as long as you're on the line and moving in the direction of the line. So the first thing I could do is I could multiply that up. Instead of using that for my direction vector, I could get rid of the fifths by doing five times everything. That would give me negative one, two, five. And then straight away, you should recognize ah, that was the direction vector you got by doing the vector product of the two normals. And then I could use this to move this point somewhere else so it involves nice whole numbers. You could go wherever you like. So using steps of this, or using steps of that, it doesn't matter which one. Maybe we'll use steps of this original one. Where could I move that point to? Because you can step along this line by using multiples of u. If I use the original u, if I was just to move one step of u, that would then go back to six fifths, that would go to three fifths, and that would go to one. So that's not much use. So what you could do then would be, if I wanted that all to go all the way to zero, I could take seven steps of this. This plus seven of those, that point plus seven of those would give me this then. Seven of those, negative seven fifths onto that, zero. Seven steps of this, 14 fifths onto this, that's 15 fifths, that's three. Seven steps of that, seven ones onto that is seven, and there you are, those are the figures you had before. So a neater equate parametric equation B, instead of those ones, you could simply have x equals 0 minus t, y equals 3 plus 2t, z equals 7 plus 5t, which was just the same as you had before, although admittedly in the symmetric form.